Welcome to Angel Speaks. In this video, I'm going to talk about um, how to spend time with God. All right. A lot of times, people get into a religious, um, their relationship with God becomes a religion. And that's not what God wants it to be. He actually wants to have a relationship with us. So it's not, some people are like, how much, how much time should I spend reading the Bible? How much should I read the Bible? You know, do I have to do pray all the time? Can I just pray like for a minute? So I'm going to kind of help you kind of understand the gist of it. I mean, it's about relationship. So it's not about the length of time of things. It's not about what you do um, to be, to, to be technical. It's not like this. You got to make sure you do this. And then, I mean, it is, but it's not like the, the mentality should not be, I got to make sure I do this, 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 so God could love me. All right. That is a religious mindset. A demon of religion wants you to think of it that way because now you're focused on works and you're not really focused on getting closer to God in an intimate way after his heart, trying to have a relationship. So you got to think of it this way. How do, you have, how do you build a relationship with anybody, with a friend? How do you build it with a girlfriend or boyfriend? You need to have that communication. You need to spend time with them. You need to spend quality time with them. Um, it, let's say you're trying to build a close relationship with your husband or wife. Um, how does that relationship become stronger? You don't just talk once a day and say, hey, is it okay if I just talk to you for five minutes today? Is it okay if I just, you know... Well, I just give you that five minutes and then it's cool, right? We good? Okay. It doesn't work that way. Um, you know, you, you you know, to build that closer bond, what do you do? You you text, you text each other throughout the day, here and there. You put a smiley face, you 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 know, love you. You doing okay? Okay, great. All right, honey. What do you want for dinner? You know, so it's this 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 thing that just you're just connected all day type of thing. A little bit here and there. It's not like you're looking at a time. How long am I talking? Oh, I'm talking to my wife. It went over the 15 minute mark. Honey, I gotta let you go. It don't work that way. So think of the relationship with God like that. And so um, you're reading the Bible not to score points. God doesn't need you to read the Bible to score points to heaven. You can't make God love you any more than he already does. Keep that in your mind. He died for our sins while we were sinners. When people were crucifying Jesus on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they do. He loved them even while they were torturing him, making fun of him, all that. So you think you can make God love you more by reading the Bible more? Doesn't work that way. So know that his love is unconditional. It does not change. The love does not change. The love does not leave. We read the Bible for ourselves to grow in faith. And so we can please him by using that faith to help others and to keep ourselves spiritually strong so we can stay in communion with him. Because it's not going to please him if we don't believe in him. It's like if you're in a relationship with somebody and you never believe in them. You're always talking down on them. You're, you're always like, they're like, hey, honey, you know, I love you, right? Yeah, whatever. Sure you love me. That relationship is going to die because it's like they don't believe anything I say. And it's the same thing with God. You need to build that faith so that you can have a healthy relationship. So that you can save the lost souls and set the captives free. How are you going to do that without no faith? Faith is like a muscle. You have to exercise it for it to be strong. So we're doing these things for us to become better people, stronger um, Christians and believers so that we can do what he called us to do. There is a mission. What is the mission? We need to let people know the truth because they're believing a lie. The devil has them bound in chains and he wants to take them to hell with him because he's a sore loser. He's like, well, if I'm going to hell, I'm going to take as much people as I can with me. Our job is to decrease the damage. We don't want people going suffering for eternity forever and ever. So he doesn't either. He wants us to live with him and 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 you know in in 
And so that's the mission. That's what, what you have to have your mind in. And so you don't do these things to score points with God. He can't love us any more than he already does. All right. When we don't do these things, we're hurting ourselves because, and of course also him, because he sees that this is going to hurt you. This is going to leave you open for the enemy's attacks and leave us in bondage. And that's the only thing. He's like, come on, son. Come on, daughter. Please don't hurt yourself. It, he, God doesn't turn mad at you because you don't read the Bible or something. He doesn't give you the stank eye. Um, religious people, they, they, they get into this mentality and they, they look at God like, um, I have to work for his love. I don't want him to be mad at me. You know, and it's it's based on fear and it's based on a controlling thing. Like we, they start, we, when we think that way, you start to look at God like a controlling person. What do controlling people do? It's like they're ready to punish you. Um, as soon as you don't do something they want, what do they do? Well, I'm not going to act like I love you then. I'm going to give you a silent treatment. I'm going to break up with you. It's always ultimatums and you're doing everything. Oh no, I have to make sure I do this or else they're going to stop loving me. I have to do this or else. And when you get into that mindset, you are you are losing the concept that God loves you. And then you're going to live off of fear all the time. The video is about to stop, I think. Um, if it stops, I'm going to continue in another video. But anyway, um, so, yeah, um, you can't get in that mindset, you know. He's always rooting for us. He wants to protect us. When we are disobeying him, we are, what we're doing is we're saying, we're opening a doorway to danger. And we're saying, come here, demon. <laughs> come on over here, devil. Can you come over here and just start to wreak havoc in my life? It's cool. It's all good. God's, I mean, you know. And God's like, oh, my goodness. Angels, can you please bring these people to, to try to remind this person of my love? Can you protect this person? Because they're going to start drinking and they're going to drive and... Please, can you prevent them from having an accident? This is how much God loves us. He does, he does all these things to protect us. And, and so please don't get in that religious. That is a spirit of religion that gets into this mindset of works is what keeps us God, keeps God loving us. Um, and so how do you spend time with God? You, you know, you're working off of, you know, trying to build that, you know, and you have a conversation with him. When you pray, you're supposed to be asking him questions. And then you wait for the answer. He may not answer you right away. So you keep that expectancy. God's going to speak to me about this. He's going to give me the answer. So I have to wait patiently for it and be on guard to listen to what he has to say to me. And, and that's, that's how you build that relationship because he's going to end up answering you. And then it's going to make you, you, you get more filled with love the more this, this, reciprocation of communication starts to happen and then you get closer and then the more this happens the more you start to understand who God is on an intimate level not a, a religious level where it's like I know about God because I read the Bible all the time it's not about knowing about him it's about knowing who he is on a personal intimate level and then the more time you spend with him and you do need to set time for prayer and with me, that's what I did, you know, I, I, I was, when I would put the kids to sleep, I would, um, you know, let me listen to a few worship songs and just set up, set the atmosphere. And then I would pray. I'll go on my knees. and I'll start praying, you know, praise you, Jesus. Thank you for everything. Lord, forgive me my sins. Um, please give me wisdom. Lord, help me with this situation. And, and I'll just start talking to him. Lord, protect my children, my family and whatever needs and concerns I give it to him. And, and that's what I did every day. And I would listen to sermons, you know, and I would read the Bible, you know. And, and and me knowing that his love never changed for me, that helped me keep getting closer to him. If you got that mindset that you have to work so hard, it, it, it makes it feel harder to serve him. When something feels hard, if, so, if it feels hard to love somebody, um, it becomes this, this hard job that it makes you want to give up. And it makes it easier to fall, you know. Um, when you're in a relationship with somebody that no matter what you do, you still feel like a failure because they never give you any credit. They never make you feel appreciated. Um, or any little thing, they're pointing out your faults. Oh, look what you did. It makes you feel like giving up, doesn't it? It makes you feel like I might as well not try. Because every time I try, it's like I'm not good enough. 
And that's what the devil wants you to think about God. So that that's how you get in that mode, that religious mode, that religious mindset, which I'm going to talk about the religious spirit in the next video. Um, but yeah, this is how you spend time with God. You got to think about it like building a relationship with anybody else. Um, so you, you spend, you, you take time out of the day, you know, quiet time where you're not going to have distractions and you set some time out to worship him. You set some time out to pray to him and you set some time out to listen to a sermon and read the Bible. Um, but it's important that you, he needs to be living in your heart. You have to accept Jesus as your personal savior. And because what happens is when you accept him into your heart, you say, Lord, forgive me of my sins. Please live in my heart. I believe you died for my sins and I want you to live in my heart and, and, and help me to live for you. When you do that, he sends the Holy, his Holy Spirit. He sends his Holy Spirit to live inside of you from that day forth. And it stays living inside of you. The Holy Spirit now helps you to understand the Bible. When you don't accept Jesus in your heart um, and you read the Bible, it's going to be hard to understand it because the people that wrote the Bible were inspired by the Holy Spirit. So in actuality, it's like the Holy Spirit is speaking through these people. And if you don't understand the Holy Spirit, you're not going to understand what the Bible's talking about. It's going to seem like Chinese. So you need to ask God into your heart, first of all, so that the one who, so to speak, wrote the Bible is going to give you understanding. And he's now going to help you to understand when you read it. And then you can ask him, Lord, help me to understand what I'm reading. And you get a Bible version that's going to be easy to understand, you know, because sometimes some Bible versions might be a little, you know, harder to follow. Um, I like the New King James Version, but, you know, there's other versions that, you know, you could read, go to the Bible bookstore and, um, you know, um, and read different ones and see what which one that the language sounds a little bit easier to understand. And maybe you won't get that bored when you read it. So that's how you spend time with God. You know, you want to keep. You want to feed yourself with the truth because the truth is helping you to understand who he is and you want to spend that quiet time with him and you want to kind of understand that he's with you all the time. If he's with you all the time, you can talk to him any time of the day. You could give him thanks throughout the day. Lord, thank you. Thank you for this. And and just like you talk to him every now and then throughout the day and, and, and that relationship is going to grow. It's going to be a beautiful thing and you're not going to regret it. So that is how you spend time with God, you guys. I hope this was helpful. Please like and comment. Please subscribe. Please stay tuned. More to come.